the most constructive thing that the Hong Kong government uh, can offer to students is to sit down and listen to the students what we can do together within the framework decision of the National People's Congress Standing Committee. The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government cannot make something that is not in the basic law possible. Politics is the art of the possible, and we have to draw a line between possibilities and impossibilities. The central authorities, and this is not the Hong Kong SL government, the central authorities have said clearly that they will not retract the decision of the special, uh, of the standing committee uh, decision uh, on the 31st of uh, August. So that's what they said. And we would like to explore with them what else we can do together so that the 5 million eligible voters in Hong Kong will have the first opportunity in Hong Kong's history to vote in the chief sector in 2017. And this has never happened before. It's not, I'll say this again, it's not provided for in the John Declaration. The Sino-British John Declaration does not have the words universal suffrage or direct election of the chief sector. What the uh, John Declaration does say is that the chief sector of Hong Kong Special Administrative Region will be elected on the basis of consultation or election held locally. That's what it said. But it's not, you're still, you're still defending the same line there, though. The people of Hong Kong have made it clear that you can take a different line, you can express a different viewpoint to China. You're still defending the whole thing. The views, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll, I'll ask my secretary to supplement my answer. The views of the Hong Kong people have been communicated to the National People's Congress very clearly after five months of uh, consultation. We sent to Beijing not just the report of the Hong Kong Island government, but the um, views expressed in the original form, uh, in the form of uh, appendices uh, to, to Beijing. And we, we also uh, organized, and this was the initiative of the Hong Kong Island government, face-to-face uh, -face dialogue uh, between uh, various uh, sectors and parties uh, in Hong Kong and uh, leaders of the uh, central authorities who are in charge of this uh, matter. Uh, uh, one example was the meeting uh, in Shanghai, which I personally initiated. Uh, I, I know it was uh, boycotted by some uh, members of Let's Go, but a good number of uh, the so-called pan-democratic uh, 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 camp of uh, Let's Go attended, and they had a, a chance uh, of uh, a di direct dialogue uh, with the um, uh, 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 leaders of the uh, uh, central authorities and no one no one has said specifically what has been left out of the report or the appendices uh, that we submitted to the uh, central authorities uh, i just want to supplement that the um, the prevailing views from the uh, hong kong federation of students um, is one that they would like to have um, civic nomination to be part of the nomination process um, for the uh, 2017 chief executive election. I think such a view has been discussed inside out in the past 12 or 18 months already in various sectors of the community, uh, including several occasions where uh, various sectors of the community as well as all um, the uh, various political parties of legislative council have face to face and mentioned this point loud and clear to uh, the responsible officers from the central uh, people's government uh, in the past few months as well. And, um, and the NPC Standing Committee has taken into account all those views, uh, pros and cons, from the Hong Kong community and has come up, come up with a decision made on the 31st of August. So uh, we, would, we would have to press forward uh, to take the matter forward so as to catch up with the timetable that we would like to have universal suffrage uh, for 2017. If we continue to drag on on something that is impossible uh, in the coming three months, then uh, the, the answer would be quite clear, or the reality is that we would not have universal suffrage for 2017. I don't think that is what the majority of Hong Kong people would like to see. I think the majority of Hong Kong people would like to see one man one vote for chief executive election in 2017. And if we could enlarge our, our horizon around the world um, for more than 160 or 170 something jurisdictions, not many have civic nominations as part of their political structure, especially for the election of the head of government or the head of state. So uh, if, we, if we 
uh, insists on such a thing in the, in the uh, electoral system for 2017. I think we are really heading towards the wrong direction. I think we all have to have full regard to the basic law and the constitutional framework and having full regard to the political reality. At the end of the day, we need two-thirds majority of electoral members to, uh, to support our proposal. And that would be across political party support, not just the pan-democratic, not just the pro-establishment, but all political parties would have to work together to make it happen. That's the point we are trying to make. Um, also outside electoral, I also look forward to a dialogue with the students, trying to explain to them the legal confines that we are facing. And, and we both have to be real, uh, realistic. There are many years ahead for our young students. Uh, they have all the years, all the time. In the fullest of time, they should not just put all their focus on 2017. If they can just step a little bit and look beyond 2017, maybe many of their aspirations could be addressed in future years as well. As the chief executive has just mentioned, 2017 is not the final stop. It is the beginning of a new chapter for democracy in Hong Kong. And I hope the students will see that and, and, and sidestep the uh, opportunity um, next week uh, when we begin our dialogue. Okay, thank you.